MC Toon challenged me to review the debate he had with Flatsoid right after I finished editing my video about him. My first reaction was not to do that, because Flatsoid had repeated all of the nonsense the average flat earther has repeated in turn, plus he added a lot more. But I watched the first half hour again and thought, what if I just play these 35 minutes and put a counter next to it, which counts each and every mistake Flatsoid makes. The average IQ of my viewers is around three times that of Flatsoid, so they would understand what was going on. But then again, 35 minutes is way too long for a video of mine, and it would be a somewhat lazy response to McToon's request. So now you are watching three key moments from this debate, and I will explain very quickly how wrong Flatsoid is here. Anyone can guess then that the rest of the debate wasn't the much better. First blunder. The GP from the star has to be on the same plane as the GP of the observer. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Here Flatsoid states that the GP of the star should lie on the same plane as the GP of the observer. Now, two points always lie in the same plane, so the point Flatsoid is making is just a mood argument. But we know that Flatsoid uses this statement later on when he is talking about planar trigonometry and mixes up the horizontal plane and the vertical plane that is formed by the non-existing triangle of flat earth. And because he means the horizontal plane in this case, the statement just isn't true. Now he's trying to show the procedure to calculate the distance to the GP of the star. Watch this. When we take a angular measurement to a star, let's say in the sky here, we are on the ocean floor or you know on a ship or whatever, it doesn't matter using a nautical sextant, so obviously on a little boat. Okay, now we've got two straight lines going out that way. You would agree that we have a 90 degree. No, that's not 90. That's less, any... that's less than 90. We don't have a 90. That's not 90 there. No, that's less than 90. That's maybe. That's not 90. Oh, that's there 90. it is. Okay, now it's 90. Yeah. Between... We have a 90. Okay. Yeah, at that point, at that point. Yep. Yeah. Great, and the star has a 90 as well, correct? That, that's it. That's presuming, what you're doing is presuming that the Earth is no, flat. No, 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 that's, You're making that's an assumption. You're making an assumption no, this on is, this. This is how the trigonometry works, mate. So you say, uh, but but you, but you're, this is just your claim. Let's, you're not actually showing the process of celestial let's, navigation let's, from let's from say, a citation that you that you brought up. You're just, let, let, you're just say, inventing this process that is not based on the books that you were referencing. Let's say I measured a angle to the star at 50 degrees. Okay? Okay. You would agree that's 50 degrees. Okay, to the star. Not to scale, that's fine. Yeah. But yeah, it's not to scale, obviously. Yeah. Okay. We measured 50. What's the internal sum of a triangle? 180. 180. Yeah. So that would give us 40, correct? Yeah. Again, he is making the mistake of placing the GP of the star on the horizontal line, but that's not the most obvious blunder he makes here. He draws the triangle and for a change calculates the internal angles of that triangle correctly. He then comes up with this gem. Okay, so if we use the math anyway to just verify this, 90 minus the measured angle gives us the altitude, the elevation angle, which is 40 times 60 nautical miles, which gives us our distance. So because I did this, I was able to get the distance from my GP to the star's GP. You get no, what happened no. now. Where, where did you get that 60 from? Nautical miles. Yeah, but where did you get that on, from? From the angular reading. Houston, we have a problem. Although he constantly keeps on saying that celestial navigation depends on trigonometry, he all of a sudden, out of the blue, as MC Toon says, comes up with the 60 nautical miles per degree formula. First of all, trigonometry doesn't provide any way to solve a right triangle when you only have the angles of that triangle. I explained this time and time again by showing the triangle calculator 
and also by showing that when you keep the angles constant, the triangle can have any size you want. You just need at least the length of one side of a right triangle to calculate the other sides. Flatside keeps on repeating Sokatoa, but it looks like he never ever pressed on the sign button of, the, of his calculator, let alone the inverse sign button. Maybe he hasn't got a calculator with this function at all and uses something like this. And if the nautical miles per degree formula would work in a right triangle, all right triangles would be huge. As someone explained in a reaction to a silly post of flatsoid. By the way, in his own post it is ex explained that you at least need two sides or one side of and an angle. Poor flatsoid. McToon challenges flatsoid to explain where the 60 nautical miles per degree comes from. And Flatsoid starts a rant about measuring angles ab along the curve of the sextant and therefore the angles represent a linear distance or something along this line. I'll skip this part, it is too painful to watch. And then he has his Eureka moment. Why an angular measurement on a sextant leads to a triangle. Watch this. This degree arm is usually about 120 degrees, correct? Usually, okay. They all the differ 100 degrees, 120 doesn't matter. But this angle is 60 degrees. Now, what's 60 plus 120? 180. 180. So, making a triangle. Need I say more? 